DIY is all about confidence. Okay, so the other part of my project today is to continue building this pergola. So that's the thing up around the decking. So I actually built the frame for that, the grey bit, last year. Um, and I'm just adding on some finishing touches now, which are obviously those support beams in the corner, which you can see. And uh, there's going to be some cross beams as well, which uh, you'll have seen in the video before. So um, when I first went to do this then, it's pretty simply made to be fair. I just attached a pole and screwed some 2 by 4 onto the pole on both sides and then I screwed that top piece, see where the right hand side screws are, they're going into that piece. I mean it's not perfect but to be fair you wouldn't know unless you were really close. So I have been attaching these bits on here so you can see that they are cut at an angle lined up flush with the side and obviously an angle on the top. I'm not going to show you how to do that because it requires a miter saw which is one of these things or you could do it with a normal saw. So what I am going to show you is I've done those already but these are the, going to be the cross beams. So most pergola cross beams have a shape cut into them. So I'm actually just you can see here I'm actually going to cut those shapes in, like I've done on that one, uh, onto the pergola. Obviously I'll do the same on both sides. And once I've done that, I'm going to paint them so they match the colour. Okie dokie, so I'm going to cut my corner out of these um, cross beams. I've attached it all onto there, it's really secure. It's in place. And what you won't be able to see, in fact, just move you. So, Here's the area that is obviously going to get cut off. I don't know if you can see, but there's a really faint um, red line there because have a, there's a laser attached which tells you where it's going to cut. So really important that you have obviously safety uh, first. I wouldn't expect anyone at home to do this or to have one of these, but you can take wood to certain shops and get them to cut it for you. So you could do that. Or obviously if you've got a parent who's quite handy or you've got a tool, you could maybe ask your parents to do it for you, but there's no reason why you can't have a go um, at doing it. So, this is all super locked in place, nice and tight. Okay. Simple as that. So, you can see now, so you've cut out that shape. I'll go on and do the next one now. Okay, so it's a new day today, uh, day two on Pergola. Um, this is what it was like the end of yesterday. Uh, I left you just as I was cutting these shapes out, so you can see now each end has been cut. Now, what I didn't record was this bit that I'm going to do now um, on this last piece. So I've done it so far, but um, I thought I would show you the last piece. So essentially what I did was... Um, I got up the ladder and I measured the distance from this beam to this beam because that's where the uh, cross beams are going to sit. So once I did that, uh, I took that number, which was, if I remind myself, oh, look, so I wrote all my numbers down here, look. So the distance between the two beams was 319 centimetres. Um, what I then did then was measure the distance from the end of here, because this is the bit that will sit on the cross beam, this side will be up in the air. Uh, so if I was to show you this, for example, it up. so the beam will sit like that on top of the cross, uh, on top of the two supports. So I measured from this end, obviously, all the way to the other end. And that was uh, a distance of 347.3. So what I needed to do was work out how much overhang was I going to have between where the um, posts were going to sit on the pergola because they actually have a bit which will hang over each side. So if I show you up here. So from there 
to there it was 319 but the wood will actually come and hang over the side a little bit on both ends so i had to work out how much how much was i going to be able to overhang it by and work out what it would be on each side so to do that and my maths might not be right but i took 347.3 uh, and took away 319. So what I was left with was uh, 28.3. So what I worked out was my overhang would be 14, um, where did I write that? 14.15. So I measured 14.15 there. So this is the bit that will hang over the edge. And obviously I did the same on this side uh, is 14 point whatever I just said, 13. This bit then is the width of the wood on top of the pergola. So um, when it sits on top, I'll get a piece of wood to show you. Ooh. So if we imagine that this is the cross beam, that would then sit like that on top of the cross beam and it would obviously overhang by that much. So all I did was I took this piece of wood, this exact bit that I'm using, and just drew a line up on the side. So I haven't actually done this one yet, so I'm not very accurate when I do these bits and bobs. So I'm just gonna put that there and then I'm gonna draw a line like I've done for these here. So I know that that is the bit that's gonna be sat on, uh, this wood is gonna be sat on the pagoda. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and I'll Anyways, come back. Right, so last time I left you, I had lined these up. So. That is exactly in line and I've clamped it together so it won't move. So I know if I was to draw a line down each of these sides, as long as it's lined up, I know. There we go. So that should now line up and that should be good. Same on this side. I line that up. Make sure it's flat and on that side and on that side okay so there's no need for me to remeasure every time as long as they are exactly right then it should be fine so what you'll see now then is i've obviously added these um brackets okay and the reason is obviously when i tip this up so when i tip that up this then will screw onto the pergola. That should work. I was just thinking there that I wouldn't have space, but yeah, it will work. So that will screw onto the pergola and I'll put one on this side as well and that'll screw on so it'll be nice and secure and it won't be able to move. All right, so I'm just gonna screw the other brackets onto there and I'm gonna screw them on both sides so that I know where to go, all right? So uh, carpenters worldwide probably will wince when they look at how I work. But anyways, what I've done now then is I have um, essentially, I should put a line on the top, same as the other one, so that when I flipped it over, I'll be able to trace that line down on that side. So I know exactly where to put the bracket on both sides. What I'm going to do before I do that is I'm actually going to put one up onto the pergola to see if I've actually measured it out right, because there's a good chance I haven't. What I like to do is just have a go, get it done, and if it's wrong, I fix it. I'm not the type of person who will measure, 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 which is what you probably should do, but that's not what I do. So I'm gonna put it up there, see if it actually is right, uh, and like I say, a good chance it won't be, and I'll have to start again. <laughs> Anyways, we'll try. I'll take you up to have a look, but just so you see what I mean by the overhang. So it will look like this in the end. Get around. So 
so it has a bit of an overhang. I'll show, I'll show you how the brackets have lined up then. So I've actually managed to get it quite good. Well, actually, no, I haven't, look. Oh, but that's all right though. As long as that goes on there, I'll just make sure on this side then, I'll make sure that I put the bracket on that outer edge rather than in that line. I'll put it there. See, I told you I never get it 100% right, but as long as it works, it works. Although I will actually have to check that it overhangs at the same amount on both sides, actually. I will have to look at that. So if we look up here, uh, you can see that that one is actually lined up quite well. So what I might need to do now is have a quick wee measure and see what happens after that. I might have to put them all up actually and see what they look like. I'm going to do that. Right, so these aren't where they're going to stay because they're not measured out. But just to give you an idea about how it will look, I'm going to just I haven't looked at the overhang here. So they're not far off where they're at. And same for that side, they look alright. So my next job then is. The next job is I need to measure that beam from there to there and from there to there and I need to work out how far apart these beams need to sit. Then once we've done that, well in fact what I might do before that is paint the beams. So I'm in the middle of painting, making a bit of a mess. So I am painting then uh, Cooperanol Urban Slate. Okay, so I have done my first coat of paint on just one side. Okay, so the second coat was a bit quicker than I thought it was going to be. Obviously, I've still got these sides to do. So what I'm going to do for the time being is I'm now going to measure that so that I can work out where each beam is actually going to sit. What you'll notice as well is I've put both sides on now. It's a bit wonky, that one. Um, and I've put them just off center of each because obviously the size of the screw going through it would bash into each other if they were in the same place on both sides so that's why i've done it like that Okay, so during measuring the front and the back, I have come across a problem, which is fine. It's great that I've made problems and made mistakes because it shows that I'm not perfect. I'm very much just have a go, see how we get on. And if it needs fixing, it needs fixing and that's absolutely fine. So I'll just show you what my mistake is. Um, essentially at this top corner here, okay, um, you'll see where the bit that's not painted meets um, the front panel. So the bit that's not painted, the end is on is on display. Now if we go over here, on this side, the end panel actually comes to meet the, um, the front panel rather than the end panel being to the side of the front panel. So because of that, basically at the back, it's done on both sides, like that one. So this is the only corner here that has been done wrong. There. So basically what it means is my measurements are at the front, it's 343 centimetres and at the back it's 347. 
So basically we're four centimetres out, which means if I was to put them on, they would look wonky because obviously the front is shorter than the back. So for me to get them straight and for it to be perfect, I'm going to have to change the front. So that's not a problem. What it does mean though, is I need to now pull that corner apart and start again. I'm going to film that so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, so mistakes happen. It's fine. It'll take a bit of time to fix, but it doesn't matter. I'll record it. I'll probably put it on uh, fast for you just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, bye. Unbolt the corner post from the decking. So I'm going to use um, tools hold. Give it a look. So it's a bolt set. So I'll go and find out what is the right size nut and I'll show you one here. Oh, what I'm going to be doing. So when I first did this, I did anticipate that I might have done it wrong. So I only put one bolt in, in the hopes that um, I would just add the later ones in if I need to. So I'm only going to undo this one and then um, I should be able to move this post because it's going to have to come this way a bit to make it 147 and in line with that one. So that's the first job. So I'm actually going to keep that bolt safe in here because I'm terrible at losing things. Next, I'm going to take out the support beam that I put up yesterday. Because it's not painted, I'm going to take that off next. So at this point, I don't actually really know what I'm going to do next. I need to figure out which piece I want to take off first. I want to take off the front or the side. So I think I want to take the front off and try and move the front whilst the side bit stays attached. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a go at that. Okay, I'm going to clamp it first so that it doesn't fall off because it's very heavy when you um when you're trying to hold that up at the same time so i'm going to take this front bit off first i'm going to clamp it so that um it doesn't fall i'll do that with these these are brilliant by the way they are really strong and they will hold up quite a lot of weight so good investment got these from screw fix Got six by meters in it. I like having something to put my weight onto when I'm on the ladder. Means I can push into the drill better. Stops it from catching. I'm going to continue to unscrew this front beam and then what I'm going to do is actually screw it back on before I move the next one. That's the plan anyways, we'll see how it goes. There's a good chance I'll fall off the ladder, but it'll be funny for you anyways.
Just so it's done well. And remove it and clamp it and then come round. Okay, so if I show you this now then, to put the ladder. So you can see now that that edge just straight with that edge. It's a little bit uneven on the top, so I'm just gonna hammer that up so that it is um, at the right height. Okay, so I'm a hammer, I'm just gonna tap it up so that it's level on the top and then I'm going to screw it in. I've got some fresh screws as well so um, that they're nice and neat. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to unscrew the, the side panel, I'm going to move the post back a little bit, and then I'm going to re-screw the side panel back in. Uh, but this time now it should be meeting the front, so it's the same as on the other side. So that's the plan for now. Again, it'll be a bit tricky, I'm going to use the clamps to hold it up in the right place for me getting in, in everything where I want it to be. Have some more corn snacks. So what I've noticed is that bottom one on this front is actually still sticking out a little bit. There's a bit of a gap there, I'll show you actually. So, you can see now obviously that bit is unpainted and visible. Just like that bit is unpainted and visible. This wood actually when I first got it was bent. So that's why that is still not quite right. Because I can't do anything about it in a minute. Before it was like that so yesterday i fixed it to about there i have to give it a bit of time now to um 
to bend to that shape and then I'll be able to finally cut it into the end but this bit isn't again is a bit bent but I reckon you'll see that gap there it's under there I reckon if I clamp that I could probably get it tighter and then you'll see that it's not quite flush there it's fine at the top but there's just as if sticking out a little bit so I'm going to try and just get that a bit tighter I'll have to unscrew it before I clamp it in because at the minute the screw is going to hold it to where it is. So I'll unscrew it, clamp it as tight as I can and then I'll screw it back in. So it's not 100% better, but it's better than it was, which is what I always aim for. So I can take you up now. You'll see that it's not sticking out. In fact, it's not sticking out at all. So that's exactly what I wanted. Obviously this will now need to get painted, but what should happen now is this front should be the same length as that back. I need to just screw that back in. So I'm going to need to drill it again and then put it back in so I'll do that's the next job <laughs> although it might be a good idea for me to measure it first before I do that um because god knows it might not be the same so I need it to be 347 before it was 343 uh so two inches it's two by four that we've just increased that uh that wood thickness is two inches so probably add on five centimeters which will take us to one 348 rather than 347 but fingers crossed just to prove it we have 347 I don't know if you can see that can you probably so yay now we can work out where we want the beams and I can finish the painting get a focus in there there I need to finish that painting and we need to paint those co oh, i need to get the cross corner back on i'll get that on now Okay, so I am no mathematician and uh, I'm not really 100% sure how I would work out where to put each of these beams. So my little bit of maths that I think might be right and might give me an idea of where to put them is to do the following. I've written on my piece of woodwork. Okay, I'm having a seat because, you know, I've been doing this for a good couple of hours now. So um, this is my working out then. This, this is how my brain works. So here's a picture of my diagram. Okay, uh, the total width is 347. Each beam is going to take up 4.5 centimetres. So I need to work out what's the gap each there. So I calculated four, which is obviously wrong, because I'm going to have five gaps, because there's four beams. So the working out that I did was 347 take away 18, because each beam is worth that amount of space. So we don't want to work out that space. We want to work out the extra space left. So then we look for 329. So we need to know what space uh, we need for each of those. Sorry, how big is the space going to be for each of those five? So 329, I thought, divided by five would give us 65.8. So if I'm right, each of these would be 65.8. If I'm right, there's a good chance I'm not. And I'm sure... There was probably a much quicker and easier way to do that. But, like I say, I'm not a mathematician. So I just do it my way. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Mark it out. 
on there so I know exactly where to put my beam. I'm going to mark it at the front and I'm going to mark it at the back. And then, hopefully, once I've painted, so I haven't done that yet, once I've done that, this should be ready to go up. Okay, sorry, I'm just eating corn. I've laid what I thought was a good idea. I had these off cuts yes from yesterday, which obviously the same thickness as the wood because it came off the wood. So rather than moving the big planks, I've just moved the off cuts. So I've spaced them out at 65.8 and that looks pretty good to me. I think there was the odd millimetre um, on each one. So I might move it along slightly, I think towards this end, but I think that's all right, to be fair. <laughs> this is how I work. It just goes with what best I can do. So I shall carry on painting and then I will have a look at okay, putting so I've given the first coat on this side. I've got one more edge to do, which is obviously that one and the one on that side. I'm going to give this another coat. I'm going to flip it over, do the last bits. And then gonna whilst that's drying, I'm gonna paint all the bits that need to be painted on there and mark out the bits, ready to go on. And then it should just be a case of getting them up there and drilling them on. Make it sound easier than it is. But never mind. Let's see how we go. Okay, so I think uh we're pretty much nearly there now. So these are now painted and dried. The sun's out now, which is lovely. Uh I've done everything I think I need to do on here. I've painted all of the extra bits that we've added on. I've taken off my old Christmas lights. Um, so I think we're just a case of now putting the beams up. I've measured them out so I know where they go. The question will just be now whether these brackets, you'll see here, if you look, will line up correctly uh, with the beams. So if I've done this bit right, Hopefully, all I'll need to do, again, I'll get this. Imagine, imagine this is the cross beam. Look at that. I've used a screw that's too, too long. So imagine that's a cross beam. All I should have to do now is drill in there and in there, and that should hold it on. And I will do the same on this side. So the question will be, if I have measured it perfect, they should be fine and fit right on the beams. If I haven't, then I might have to move those brackets. Or, yeah, I'll have to move the brackets. So, I'll record that so you can have a look.
two down. So one of my brackets is just a little bit out of line on the back. So I'm going to unscrew it, screw it back in and then screw it down because at the minute it's overhanging the bar. Um, there's obviously a measurement out somewhere but if I can't notice I'm not bothered. That's how I work. One left to do. So here we have it. We have finished the gola. Not looking too bad. Okay, so final words for me. I'm looking tired. I am tired. <laughs> Anyways, final words for me is this was not about you building a pagoda, okay? Now, you might want to build a pagoda when you're older. Not a problem. But what this is really about is it doesn't matter what your skill set is, okay? You can go out, you can have a go at doing something, and you can learn to do something, okay? This is the first time I've ever built something that big, ever. Okay, but it's just about trial and error. You saw I got it wrong and it was okay because you just fix it and that's fine. And it's fine to make mistakes. It's fine not to get it right first time. But my thoughts are always this. You could pay someone else to do it or you could buy it. So this in total has probably cost me probably about £140. Okay, but if I wanted to buy one online, it was looking at £300, £400. Pound, all right. And also... When you get those online, you still have to build them. So what's the point in having the bits cut for you and the bits, maybe the drill holes put them there for you, 
if you're going to then have to assemble it yourself anyways okay now that was straightforward the only thing that i really had to cut was those beams at the top there as well the rest of it is all just the wood as it came and just screwed together so make a plan i don't even make a plan i just make it up as i go along and then i'll see if it works or not and most of the time it works and if i'd paid someone to come and do this for me because that could have been another option then that's fine i could have paid someone but my philosophy is i can have a go and if it goes wrong i'll pay someone then and therefore you might have a chance at getting it without having to pay someone and if you do end up paying someone fine you would have paid them anyways so that's my thoughts i'm pretty happy with that it's not perfect but do you know what I can look at that every day and say, I built that and I had a go. And I would say that DIY is all about confidence. The same as PE, okay? Our motto in PE is the confidence to try, the confidence to succeed, and the confidence to fail, okay? I had the confidence to try it. I had the confidence to fail because when it didn't work, it was fine. I just fixed it. And then in the end, I've had the confidence to be able to go on and succeed. So... Same goes for this, guys. Keep working hard and find a hobby that you like, whether it's DIY or not, but find something and have a go. You never know, you might be brilliant. I mean, I obviously am. Thank you very much, guys. Bye.